So, Legend of Genji, the fan project just dropped a timeline of events. Let's go over it. Hey guys, welcome to the Geek Talk. Today we'll be simply talking about a timeline update from the Legend of Genji project, notably the timeline from the end of Legend of Korra book 4 to Korra's death decades later. First up, in 174 AG, we have Legend of Korra book 4 events happening, and then we have Prince Wu abdicating from his throne. This, of course, overlaps with the actual timeline of Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, but we start to diverge once we get our first Earth Federation president, Ruolan, who is elected. Four years later, we have the official marriage of Asami Sato and Avatar Korra. And then a year after that, Opal and Bolin tie the knot, with Toph Beifong disappearing into the swamp permanently. Of course, this is what Toph always wanted to do, but I wonder if something happened between Bolin and Opal? Maybe Toph disapproved of that marriage and that's the reason she went off into the swamp permanently? I don't know, I could be reading too much into that. Next up, we have Fire Lord Zuko passing away, along with Avatar Korra creating the Global Assembly. This is probably something similar to the United Nations. Yes, we have the United Republic and Republic City, but it seems like Korra goes ahead and does this for the entire world. Also, in that same year, we have Mako marrying Miri, an original character from Legend of Genji. Two years after that, we have the firstborn child of Team Avatar between Mako and Miri, and the name of that child is Rin. In 183 AG, Janora graduates from Ba Sing Se University, and Milo and Bumi journey across the world, which I think is really awesome in particular because Milo and Bumi would totally vibe. And by the time that Milo became an adult and could do his own thing, I can definitely see him hanging out with his crazy kooky uncle. In 186 AG, we have a new Earth Federation president, General Jian Wu, who is elected. And in 188 AG, we have the second child to be born between Team Avatar, and that is Jade Beifong, who is born to Opal and Bolin Beifong. And oh my goodness, I just realized, Bolin takes on the Beifong name. <laughs> I just saw that right now. That's actually pretty cool. I also think it's interesting that they took about 10 years to have their first child. I would think, personally, that Bolin and Opal would have probably been one of the first to have children. So I wonder if that's going to be a storyline that comes up, the reason why it took them almost 10 years to have a child. In 189 AG, we have the Foggy Swamp and Sandbitter Rebellions happening, which I think is pretty cool that we have that sort of world building going on. Also, we have Zaofu officially succeeding from the Earth Federation, becoming its own independent state, which it kind of seemed like that was already going to be the case for Zaofu anyway, even within the confines of the Legend of Korra storyline. So I definitely agree with that decision. And then we have Iki marrying Dae Sung, which I think makes a lot of sense because I believe of all of Tenzin's children, Iki would probably be the first one to get married. And one year after that, it seems like the influence of Iki getting married sort of stirs that up for Janora as well as Janora and Kai get married. Now, I'm not always the biggest fan of these childhood relationships actually growing into marriage. I, that's something that happens in narratives all the time and it's something that's not often true in our real lives. We only know so many people who are actually high school sweethearts who go on and marry each other and have a successful marriage. But I'm okay with it. I mean, generally, that's just what comes with the territory with these sort of storylines. But I always enjoy it more when I see that realistic version of it where, you know, not necessarily everybody, you know, has those romances. But I do know the ship between Kainora is very strong. So you got to kind of have to do that, right? Also, in 190 AG, we have San and Samir Beifong are born to Opal and Bolin Beifong. I'm guessing uh, San and Samir are twins, which is pretty cool. That would make sense too, since Opal does have twin brothers. So it would make sense that, you know, twins do go in the family. Typically, if you have twins in your own family or family tree, you're going to get more twins. So that's cool that that note was put here with San and Samir. Then in 191 AG, we have Kao Song being born. Uh, Kao Song is a new character to Legend of Genji. Lin retires and Mako becomes police of chief. That seems pretty valid. And then Iroh II abdicates his position, uh, probably I would guess on the Fire Nation Navy. And Shizuka becomes Fire Lord. And Shizuka is an entirely new character to Legend of Genji. Then in 192 AG, the new Earth Federation president Bao Jung is elected. Korra dies suddenly in an explosion in Ba Sing Se. So it's kind of unfortunate. That is the end of Korra's life from what we got from this timeline. It seems like she 
didn't have a desire to have children, which I mean, I think that might be valid. I don't see a Korra having, you know, those motherly instincts to or want to have children. And Asami, it could go either way. I feel like with Asami, I think she just would have gone with what Korra wanted. So I guess that makes sense that Korra never had a child uh, of any kind. But the big mystery of this entire series is why Korra died in this explosion. And I'm guessing that is going to be revealed when we get the full story. So now this is where the timeline shifts from the Legend of Korra timeline to the Legend of Genji timeline. Genji, of course, is born directly after Korra's death, as is the case with the Avatar spirit going from one body to the next in the next Avatar cycle. And Genji is born to the Siwang Desert. Luan, who is another new character from Legend of Genji, is born in Gaoling. Aiko Hibana is also born, also a new character from Legend of Genji. And then Song Tai is born, and then Katara, the last of Team Avatar, except for Toph, since we don't know what's going on with Toph right now, passes away. In 193, Maya is born. Mako and Miri divorce. Oh, okay. So I really like the idea of that. And the fact that we do get a divorce storyline, I think, is actually really important too. Uh, as we have always seen from Avatar, we get a lot of progressive storylines or just, you know, very nuanced and, and fully formed storylines. So the idea of a divorce. I think is a good storyline to have um, as part of Legend of Genji. Also, at the end of 193 AG, Toph Beifong II is born to Bolin and Opal Beifong. Again, I'm liking the progressive sort of outlook with some of these things. One, Bolin taking on the Beifong name, which I think he totally would because he's a total fanboy. But also, usually a name like the second is reserved for male offspring. So you'll usually have that with, you know, John Smith the second or Michael Cooper the second. But you don't typically see that with uh, females. And I think it's cool here that Toph Beifong the second, which is their, I think that'll be their fourth child because they had one child, the, the set of twins, and now Toph Beifong the second, which is a really cool homage to Toph Beifong and also just a cool naming situation in general. Then in 194 AG, Nami is born on the winter solstice. Nami, of course, is another new character from Legend of Genji. Two years later in 196 AG, Nami meets Po as a toddler, starting a lifelong friendship. And then in the following year in 197 AG, twins Rei and Ling Ling are born to Iki and Dae Sung. In 198 AG, Luan is announced as the new avatar by the Earth Federation in White Lotus. So it looks like the Earth Kingdom, uh, there's a trend here where they're really bad at identifying avatars. If you wanna know more about that and learn more about that, I have a video here where we talk about Rise of Kyoshi and Shadow of Kyoshi. Bumi passes away. Of course, we're speaking of Bumi uh, Aang's child. We're not talking about King Bumi. In 199 AG, Genji's little sister, Shay, is born in the Si Wong Desert. Now, this one's particularly interesting because of all the avatars we've seen thus far, none of them have had siblings. And I always thought that would be an interesting storyline, especially if you have a little bit of conflict between the siblings where one is a little bit jealous that one is the avatar. Maybe even the little sister, uh, Shay, she could possibly be a non-bender, which would be an extra kind of like jab where it's similar to Sokka to Katara, except if Katara was the avatar. In 200 AG, Sozin's comet passes by, sparking intense debate about the Fire Nation's dark history and modern Air Nation politics. Now, this is very interesting because I would wonder if, you know, maybe some sort of faction, some sort of Fire Nation faction, maybe not the government itself, maybe not the entire Fire Nation, but maybe, you know, there will be criminals, especially in Republic City, who would want to capitalize on Sozin's comet. So it'll be interesting if we see some sort of backstory or storyline or some, you know, conflict that happened uh, within that time period, because it would be a nice time for the bad guys to do something in that situation. Two years later in 202 AG, we have Tenzin passing away and Janor becomes the new leader of the Air Nation. In 203 AG, we have Maya being recruited by the Dai Li and leaves her home among the ocean folk. Maya, of course, being a new character of Legend of Genji. In 204 AG, we have all sandbenders, including Genji's family, being forced out and relocated to cities. Now, this will be a really, really cool storyline if they are getting into the ideas of gentrification and displacement. Um, I think that is an important topic right now, especially in the United States of America, where a lot of urban areas are going through this uh, very, very nuanced and complicated scenario that is gentrification and gentrification leading to displacement. Again, I don't know anything about what's going on in the series, but I think that would be a really cool storyline to delve into. And that's what this little piece here seems to be alluding to. 
Later in that same year, we have Luan beginning his formal training in earthbending. In 205 AG, we have Genji's father returning to Siwang Desert, leaving his family behind in Jinsha. So it seems like there might be some sort of familial issues going on with Genji's family. If for some reason the father's like, all right, I'm peacing out, I'm going back to the desert. Maybe that's going to spark up some sort of mystery that needs to be solved during the series. In 206 AG, we have Kao Song and Song Tai earning their airbending tattoos. In 207 AG, Kaya passes away and Kaleo is born to Iki and Dae Sung. And in 208 AG, we have former Fire Lord Izumi passing away and Maya completes her training as a Dai Li agent. And then in 2009 AG, the story begins. Now, if you guys want to follow along with what this story is going to come out to, you can subscribe to the Legend of Genji YouTube channel, where everybody is eagerly awaiting the premiere and the debut of Legend of Genji. Let me know in the comments below what part of the timeline is most interesting to you. For me, I think the most interesting thing is definitely Mako and Miri's divorce and what it is about Mako and why he sucks at relationships. But also, I also want to know why it is that Korra herself was killed in that explosion. Was it like a criminal act? Was it just an accident similar to what happened to Roku? We don't know, but it's interesting to decide and figure out. But again, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys on the next one. As always, peace, love, and remember, be water, my friends.